presentation is about Naviance, which is a software program that all the schools in the district have availability to. And it's supposed to help kids try to figure out kind of what they want to be when they grow up. And so what you'll do from the Newbury Park website is you'll go to the counseling website, which is right here before you. You'll click the Naviance link. If you are a parent, you would have got an email from me earlier in the year with your unique passcode. And we use the email address that you use to register your student in queue. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you can email your alpha counselor and say, please give me access to Naviance. And then we'll go ahead and like create your account. If you're a student, you simply click this link. And then if you're logged into your learn account, what will happen is it'll jump up with a screen like, let's see here. Uh, Newbury Park, and then you'll click student, and then you'll click single sign on. You won't have to use an email. You won't have to use a password. It's simply you being logged into your Learn account, and it's all connected. So the way you can use Naviance is almost limitless, but whatever grade level you're in, there'll be a welcome message. This one happens to say, welcome seniors, because I'm pretending I'm a senior. When you click the read more, there are all kinds of links. This one for seniors has uh, how to apply to colleges, like step-by-step. -step. There's letters of rec, how to ask for them, step-by-step, -step, financial aid, how much is it going to cost for me to attend XYZ college, transcripts, how do I request and send one, and a link of everything from A to Z that you could possibly want to know about high school and college. The second piece of Naviance that you can jump into is uh, there's a thing called Course Planner. So what's super cool about that is if you're a freshman, let's just say, you can go to a course plan and you can pick one. So let's say you just wanna graduate, you could pick that one. You could say, I wanna go to a super highly selective college and you can click that one. And whichever one you click, you can then add courses from our course library at Newbury Park High School. And then as you add them, the system will give you a check mark telling you that you're going to in fact satisfy the requirements per subject area. And then when you click on the link, it gives you a description of what the course is with prerequisites. And then if you're missing something, it'll have like a little red check mark saying, hey, you're missing life science or you're missing health or whatnot. So in this particular pretend plan, my student did what he was supposed to. He's planning for 235. He only needs 230. At the end of his four years, he'll need zero. He's good to go. And then if you wanted, again, to pick a different plan like full IB student, that one is there as well. There's also, again, I just want to graduate from high school, et cetera. So for the purpose of tonight, we're talking about adding colleges. And I personally believe that before you add a college, you need to know something about what do you want to study when you're in that college. And we have a self-discovery tab. And all the things you see before you are tests that students can take to help them kind of narrow um, things about themselves and how that would relate to a potential career. So you can look at their personality, their skills, their strengths, their interests. The thing about an adolescent is a lot of their interests are from what's right around them. So if mom's a thoracic surgeon and dad's a veterinarian, they probably have an interest in STEM and they might think that the only thing for them is in fact STEM. And I think that's a bad thing because that particular student might be an, a fantastic film producer, or they might be a financial analyst, or they might be, you know, an astronaut or whatever. And so rather than students simply relying on what they know, they should expand their knowledge somewhat by going, you know, cold turkey and thinking of something that will take all the attributes about them and give them an objective sort of, this is what you should be when you grow up. And so that's the Naviance. Another one uh, that I'll tell you about is called Career Explorer. And Clear, Career Explorer is awesome because number one, it's free. Number two, you don't have to put in real information about yourself and it takes about 30 minutes. So when you see the screen and there's a link to it from the counseling website under career resources, you don't join, you don't care about their membership, you don't care about the student rate. You'll simply go up to the upper right hand corner and then you will say I want to start the test or the continue the assessment so I've already started this so I'll show you what it looks like they're super simple questions but kids need to not overthink it and then when they read the question like how would you like to create art for sale and exhibit and exhibition it should be the first thing that pops in their mind so I'm 30 years old and eight to ten hours a day I'm creating art for sale and exhibition no I'm not my thing 
direct the making of a movie. Oh, I'd love that. Uh, how about entertain an audience? Awesome. Uh, estimate value of items for insurance. I hate that. So when you're done with that, like 30 minutes later and it's not time, it just tells you how much time potentially would be left if you were to keep this pace going. But you can walk away, go to the bathroom, have lunch, go to sleep, wake up the next day, don't close your browser. And at the very end, you'll get six to eight careers that are inherently what people with your personality find enjoyable in life. And then it'll tell you how to become one of them, uh, how much money you could make, et cetera, et cetera. So with that in mind, now we're armed where we can actually start looking for colleges. We'll click on the college tab. You can skip all this and just go right to advanced college search. And then let's look at the things that you already know. So let's say I'm a kid, I'm a senior, I know I want a four year. And if you want a two year, absolutely fine. There's also a two year college search um, or no college search. You can pick a career like electrician, plumber, and it'll tell you essentially how to get into those fields. Um, we'll go with co-ed, just saying. Uh, public, private, I'll leave it blank for this demonstration. Um, I wouldn't mind uh, rural or small town or large town or small city. I'm not so much into big cities. And now I'll click view. And just with those few things, it's gone down from over like 5,000 colleges to like 1,400. And now let's go with location. Um, me personally, I'd stick with California. I came here from the East Coast and I don't want to go back, but some kids are swayed by postcards with changing leave colors. And so they're like, wow, it'd be awesome to live in New York and Pennsylvania, you know, until they've spent a winter there. But, you know, you're young and you're hardy. So let's say maybe those interest you. So just those three states, we'll go ahead and click view from 1400 ish down to 243. Our list is getting more manageable. Jump on students here. Hmm, do I want a school that's smaller than Newbury Park for college? No. How about twice the size? Eh, I'd rather go a little bigger. So here we go. And you can look at uh, percentage of students with minority backgrounds, students from out of state, uh, male female ratio, and let's hit view. So now my school is down to 59 matches, which is awesome, right? Because before I had no idea, now I'm down to like 59. And then remember, um, I took the career test. Let's say it says that I should be an engineer. We'll go ahead and hit engineer. And then here's engineering, go. And here's all the different flavors of engineering. So let's pretend I want biochemical engineering and hit add. And now we're down to oh, zero. So I got to get rid of something. So let me, because most of your research institutions are in large cities. So let's go with large city, throw that on there. And I'm still at zero. So something's missing. Let's throw on some more places like the South or the Mid-Atlantic. Oh, and there's one match. So the whole point of this story is the more narrow you get in your parameters, the less options you'll have. So now let's go ahead and even add another type of engineering while I'm at it. Like, I don't know, aerospace and another type of engineering like civil engineering. And my college has jumped up to 96, much better. You can also pick by athletics. Like, do you want it to have a sports team? Are you an athlete? Do you want it to have division three soccer? For women, do you want it to have football just because you want to watch the game? Um, you can look at things by special programs like ROTC. You can look it up for all these organizations like, do I want marching band? Do I want it to be a religious school? If so, what denomination do I want it to be? Do I want an LGBTQ community? Do I want it to be a commuter school, which means most kids live off campus close and they'd go home at night when the school's closed. So these are all things that'll definitely make a big difference on your list. So let's say, for example, and I will narrow it a little more by, um, let's go with uh, athletics and let's pretend I want it to have, I don't know, football, any level done, uh, division one, two, or three uh, view. That didn't change much at all. So now when we go into the actual schools, these are the schools that thus far this pretend student has put on the list with all the things he or she wants. So let's go ahead and start looking at them. We'll look at Cal Poly Slow. We'll look at maybe, I don't know, uh, Northridge. Um, we'll go with Charlotte, why not? Princeton, sure, San Diego State, and maybe, I don't know, Syracuse and Tulane. And then what you'll do is you'll click Add to Colleges I'm Thinking About. 
And then once you add them to the list, whatever grade level you're in, they'll stay there. So eternally until you delete them, you could be a freshman and they'll live on your list. This pop-up I just got was the school saying, hey, do you want us to be able to communicate with you? And if you do, you would click next, you would give them whatever information you feel comfortable with, and then you would hit submit. And then that school could send you emails about how cool their school is. They're not recruiting you, they're just saying, here's more information. Um, so now the next step would be once you have a college list that's tentative, you need to really start looking at whether or not you have a shot of getting in. So let's look at slow, great school, wonderful place to live. However, it's extraordinarily challenging to get in. And then while that wheel is spinning and thinking, I also want to let you know on the Newbury Park website, I have another additional information about slow and the additional things they're looking at. I have like a calculator that lets you know your chances based on the other criteria that they particularly look at. So we'll click admissions and this is called a scattergram. So basically all these red X's are kids who were denied from Newbury Park High School over the last five to seven years. And then the green check marks are kids who got in and the blue thing is this specific student. So this pretend student that I have in front of you has a 1250 with a 4.0 GPA. And still, you can see that that means pretty slim chance of getting in. And so that's not the counselor saying, I'm a dream crusher and you're never getting in, which some kids also go home and report to parents that we say, which we don't. We simply say, oh, hey, it looks like, you know, that your chances for getting in slow um, based on the scattergrams, that's more of a reach school. And some kids don't want to hear that because they might have a 4.0 and they're proud of it, which is great but there's a lot more students, tens of thousands more that have a much higher GPA. So long story short, you should have no more than one or two of these types of schools where you live out here in the red. Um, and then you should have five to seven schools where you live over here in the green. And then maybe even one or two schools where you're beyond the green, where you're considered you know, a safety school. So that's San Luis Obispo. You can also look at how much it costs, what studies they offer, what student life is like, you can do a virtual tour, et cetera, et cetera. And then you can even scroll down and look at whether or not they're gonna be using SAT. And then there's even a section about what they would like you to have taken in high school. So super information for kids to, and here's the studies part I was talking about, um, the majors they offer at either undergraduate level, graduate level, et cetera. So awesome stuff and kids don't even have to leave the couch. So that's slow. And now we'll find a school that I think would be um, more of a realistic school for this particular kid. Let's go with, uh, I don't know, let's go with, um, even San Diego State's rough because our kids live north of Highway 56. So that means that it's harder for our kids to get in than kids who live in San Diego. And so here's their admissions. And again, this kid is still, um, it's a little better looking, but I don't know what happened with my screen here. There we go. So you'll still see I'm more in the green, but still not over here in the cluster. So I would call this a slight reach, whereas slow is more of a longer reach. Uh, and again, the important thing to remember about Naviance is it's only doing an X, Y axis. So the only reason a blue dot exists is because a student's taken a PSAT or an SAT or an ACT. And the thing to keep in mind is that for the next few years, the UC and Cal State are not even considering test scores. They're what's called test blind. So whether you have a perfect score or a zero score makes zero difference because they're not using that score. Um, now we'll look at another school like a common application school like Carnegie Mellon. We'll throw that in there. And then uh, again, we go to the scattergram under admissions and you'll see the scattergram lives here and there's the blue dot. So that one's a long reach. Right away, you can just see it. Um, it's a little less valid and reliable than the others because there's far less students who've applied, which brings me to my next topic, which is called College Vine. So in conjunction with Naviance, I recommend that students create a free College Vine account, which requires nothing. You don't have to use your real name. You don't have to pay anything. And the first thing it'll ask students to do is to create a profile. So on the profile, they'll put whatever name it is they want to put, They'll fill things out about what, you know, the student is looking for in a college, like extroverted, introverted, community service, whatnot, and then preferences like the types of career they're looking for, 
then demographics, where do you live? What's your gender? Um, extracurriculars, like what do you do? And the cool stuff about the extracurricular section is this, when you enter things that you've done outside of school, you're able to put different tiers. So when I click something like add new activity and I click uh, horse riding, and let's say that um, it's a hobby of mine, then it's gonna wanna know what level of achievement I've accomplished. You could either be like bottom of the barrel, like, okay, um, I did this, uh, I don't know, a couple summers, or you can go all the way up to like, I'm the best in the nation. And so when you click this and add it, and it allows you to put a description, up to 10 activities, it mirrors the common application, then it'll calculate your chances, not based only on GPA and test score, but also your extracurriculars, your ethnicity, your gender, and your major. So we'll go back to the profile. And then on this side, you can add things like your academics. I'm a 4.0 unweighted. My test score was a 33. I pretended on the ACT. This is how many AP classes I'll have by the end of the year. This is how many courses I will have taken at a community college. Um, this is how many honors classes I would have had or whatnot. And then what it'll do is it'll ask how many courses your school offers. So when I go into the edit section, you will see, this is more of a holistic representation of how colleges admit. You will see number one, we don't rank. So kids click the, I don't, you know, my school doesn't rank box. Then if you've taken an SAT or an ACT score, this is where you'll say, yes, I do have a score to share. It'll ask you to add the score. I've added my scores. You don't have to add any. And then it'll want to know how many times you have taken or you will have taken before applying. I'm going to do it once, one and done. And then have you taken PSAT? And then the reason they ask that is because some kids who are national merit finalists, that's a big deal. A lot of colleges will throw prizes at you if you're one of those kids. And then here's total coursework. Our school happens to offer 30 IB courses. Um, this is how many this student's projected to have taken by the end of senior year, how many honors courses they would have taken, how many college courses they would have taken. Um, a lot of kids, in my opinion, don't make nearly enough use out of our local community college because let's say you're applying to Stanford and you're trying to convince them that you really love pre-med, then what would have made sense then is taking courses at the community college that we might not offer. Kids could actually get all the way through organic chemistry and physical chemistry at the community college. And that shows a tangible accomplishment, you know, that takes cognitive ability. That's far more impressive than parents shelling out five or $10,000 to go to summer camp at Stanford. So even Stanford doesn't care if their applicants went to a summer program at Stanford. So parents, I would recommend you save your money and have your kids do tangible things that are of genuine interest to them. And that's what colleges really are, are crying out for, are kids that actually enjoy doing something who are also very good at it. They would rather have a kid who does one thing extraordinarily well than a kid who does 10 things not nearly as well. They're trying to build a well-balanced class. They don't really care about the well-balanced student that so many parents believe you know, is the case. And then down on coursework, you look at number of uh, courses completed so far. You save that. And then once your profile is complete, the fun begins. You can say, I need help to build a school list. When you click on that, it'll go ahead and let you pick things very much like Naviance did that are important to you about trying to find a college. Location, major, they even have cool stuff like prestige. Like let's say your parents want bragging rights. I only want to apply to ultra prestigious. And if you click that, then you'll see these tiles drastically narrow. Um, you can look at things like how many women were accepted, how many men were accepted, um, how many hours of effort you have to put into the application. Because for example, Stanford requires not only the overarching common app essay, they also require a whole bunch of short answer responses. So the Stanford application takes an extraordinary, extraordinary amount of time. Um, you can also drill down by cost, by setting, um, the ratio, this is a, an important one. Um, some kids would not thrive at all at a UC with three to 500 people in a lecture hall taught by a teacher assistant, um, whether an, an attendance isn't taken. So some kids just believe that the UC is the one and done best option ever, whereas they might thrive much more 
you know, effectively at like a Cal State. So I wouldn't get caught up on names. Um, you can also look if it has a medical school, if it's commuter school, historically black, you know, college, et cetera. So when you're all done with that, then what happens is when you add the colleges, it takes into consideration the profile that you've put together, and then it groups them for you and tells you whether or not you have a shot of getting in. So for example, Boston University, I have like a 43% chance of getting in, and that's considered a hard target. So this takes the lingo into consideration. You can even add a column. I added one called cool vibe, and then you could add, it's kind of like having your own spreadsheet. Um, Occidental, target school. That's a good one. Remember I said five to seven target schools, uh, one to two, you know, reach schools. Um, and then Berkeley, 20% chance on and on. So this is kind of a, a better tool for kids that want to look at other factors and check out even with my 4.0 and awesome test score, 13% chance at Stanford. And that'll also change by major. It'll change by gender. It'll change by whether or not you're first generation, you know, if parents attended college or not, um, ethnicity, because they would like to build a diverse class. So this is just another cool tool that kids can use um, that makes life kind of easier in terms of not everything being a mystery. So what often happens is kids ask their uncle, their parents, a private counselor who might be newly minted that doesn't know as much as he or she, you know, lets on that they know. And so what we try to do at all our schools is try to go right to the horse's mouth, so to speak. So whenever I have a question from a student or a parent, it's generally vetted with years of speaking directly with admissions reps. And so this is, again, yet another tool. And then once you've added them to your super cool, you know, column, you can do like a gallery view if that's what you prefer, like tiles, or you can do a map and then it'll show you like where these schools are on like a map. And so that would be College Vine. And then back to Naviance, the other interesting part that you would do once you've done your research and you've looked at Naviance, um, Ms. Cortez, can you guys still see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay, phew. And it's the one we're looking at right now as we speak? Yep, I can okay. see you scrolling. Okay, good. So when we're back in Naviance, you've already had a list of colleges that you're thinking about, correct? So if you're home and you're like, I'm completely lost, where was I? You can go right to the start page. You can click on colleges. You can click on colleges I'm thinking about. And all of those colleges that we just spoke of live on that page. The next step would be once you've done your research, you would click on things like, oh, um, I'm for sure applying to Berkeley and Irvine and UCSD and maybe Carnegie Mellon. And then you would click move to application list. And then you would tell us the deadlines. Berkeley, trick question, it's November 30th. Carnegie Mellon, you could pick which date it is that you're heading for. Like, are you early decision? Are you going to be early decision two? Whatever it is, let's say ED1. Um, and then Irvine, November 30, UCSD, November 30. Then when you click add, then on the counselor side, we will see, oh, hey, my kid's applying for sure to these schools. And then we're much better able to assist and give advice and counseling and so forth. Students can also add and request transcripts at the same time. Um, another kind of a trick statement because the UCs don't want transcripts until after the student is admitted, but Carnegie Mellon does want a transcript. They want an initial, a mid-year and a final. So we'll add applications. And now when kids go back home again and they're like, where's all those colleges? I know I put them somewhere. They go to colleges, which is here. And now it'll be on colleges I'm applying to. Ta-da. So that's the colleges that this student would be applying to. And what's super important, again, I, I, I can't emphasize the prestige thing enough. Here's an example, like Arizona State, they have what's called a threshold admissions. So that means if a student meets the threshold, for example, if they want to go into computer science and let's say it's a three point, whatever it is. That means if your kid has that GPA in the courses that are required, just the core courses, ASU does not weight the actual courses. So whether they had IB or CP or whatever, doesn't matter. If your student is admitted, that means they're in. So I have kids now that have applied to ASU a few weeks ago. They've already gotten their acceptance letter. And then some of the kids that are like, well, I want to go to comp sci and I want to go to a quote unquote good college. So check this out. Rather than silly US News and World Report, which has a horrible metric system for like 
ranking colleges. This is an example of a legit website that ranks, for example, computer science. And so if the student told me, hey, Napora, I want to go to a school that has a really good artificial intelligence program, when they click artificial intelligence, you'll notice that ASU is ranked 14th above MIT and above USC and above uh, Champaign-Urbana for that particular program. And when you click the arrow, you'll see the people who are on staff, and then you'll be able to click their name and see their accomplishments and what patents they hold or what research accolades they've received. And I've even had kids email the professors and say, you know, tell me why I'd want to go to your school that's not as prestigious as MIT, and, and they've gotten actual responses. And it's important to note that in the past 14 years or so, ASU has been in the top 10 schools for kids getting employed in the Silicon Valley. And so I moved here from the Silicon Valley. And so long story short, your kids don't have to stress for four years about getting into a quote unquote prestigious school. Um, and then, you know, being sad if they don't, because there's a million other options and it's all about where you finish and not where you start. And so another thing that parents would like to know, that's also in Naviance, colleges give you, many colleges give you what's called a, um, a scholarship estimation based on you know, academic progress. And so this is just an example of a calculator that kids could play around with. And as a parent, you'll see how much it would cost to send your kids. So if I'm that 4.0 kid and I'm a high school kid and I know I'll have four years of English, I know I'll have four years of math, I know I'll have my lab sciences, and I'll have my second language and I'll have my social science and I'll have my fine arts and my GPA is a four and my rank, you have to put something. And if you're a 4.0 at Newberry, you're probably somewhere in the hundreds. And then we have about 600 kids in our class. I took the ACT. Um, I got a 33-ish, close enough. And I live in California. So with just that in mind, and when I hit calculate, check this out. That means I would get this much money guaranteed like per year, 15,500 times four years. So just for my accolades that I've earned, regardless of if parents won the lottery or not. I mean, that's someone giving you like 60 grand to go to that school. So it's already about six to 7,000 less than a UC that's super crowded. And it says, by the way, you could be in the Barrett Honors College. And so that means your student gets priority registration. It means they get um, their own dorms. And it means they get more access to graduate level professors from day one. So while kids are at UCs, spending the first two years with gen ed, often in giant lecture hall classes, um, another kid could be in a class size of 40 with a graduate level professor. So that's just one example of something that kids should do when they're thinking outside that box. So each school has something like this that would be a tuition estimator. And so the long story short, the takeaway should be that when kids are picking colleges to add to Naviance, they need to do their research. And we're always happy to help them with that. And so that's pretty much what you can do to add a college to Naviance. And while we're at it, let me just also show you the website. When the students are on the home page, do to do, we're home. And then when they're back at this welcome messages, one of the things I mentioned earlier was the index of links. So these are alphabetical. And I talked to you before about the career explorer. And so rather than you having to take a note, you just need to know to get to the alphabetical links. It's under C for career resources. And then there it is. It's under the careerexplorer.com. And then another interesting note, let's say you're the student who's non-traditional like I was. Let's say college sounds cool, but let's say that you want to make a living right away. You want to leave you know, home and you want as little formal schooling as possible and you want to do something with your life. So many of you have never heard of apprenticeships, but when you click on this link, so for the state of California, you find an occupation that sounds interesting. We're going to go ahead and use surveyor. Those are the people that you see on the roads when they're um, shooting a line with a laser and they're making a report about, we're going to put the road here. We're going to put the house there. When you click search, and let's say we live in Southern California, let's go ahead and click on this. So imagine being 18 years old and they start you at $47 an hour. And for 24 months, they train you to become a surveyor. And then after that 24 months, you're making even more than $47 an hour. And for those of you that are mathy, 
you'll already realize that 47 an hour times like a 40 hour work week is is doing pretty well. You're, I mean, you're, you're approaching six figures. So, and all you need is the high school GED equivalent and you pass a test. So yes, it's important that you take, you know, read and write and arithmetic while you're in high school. So you can do well in the test, but that's just an example of, you know, not everybody goes to college, even though this presentation is primarily about adding colleges. So just to keep that in mind. And so with that, um, we do have time for questions. I'm going to go ahead and open up the floor um, to whatever questions you might have. And so who wants to kick it off with whatever question they might have thus far? All right, please put your questions on the chat and I'm going to be moderating for us here. So the first question we have is if there's a similar ranking website for other majors. Um, the other ones would be like niche.com. I don't love that one um, because it's wildly inaccurate. The reason College Vine is so accurate is because the founders are very much about data. And so they have such a huge following now with self-reported scores that they have literally tens of thousands of data points. And so some of the new kids on the block don't have nearly as many. And so I've looked on some of those websites and it says, if you want comp sci, that you have like a huge chance of getting in. But then when you look it up on College Vine or Naviance, the kid has like a 2% chance of getting in. So there may be many more out there, but the ones I know of and that I've compared for years now in terms of accuracy, I think Naviance is best because it compares kids from their school. And then I would use Common or College Vine as second best. Awesome, thank you. So another question about College Vine regarding the, the safety school uh, terminology. Um, would you say that it means that more than 75% of students have a chance of being accepted? Is that what safety is being referred to? Yeah, so let me show you, uh, let me jump back on there because that's a, an awesome question because what College Vine actually does. So just go back and do the safety yeah. uh, reach and target. So here's the College Vine list, I'm back in. And then when you wanna just click on your schools, we'll jump back on my school list, which would be, mm -hmm, it's taking a while to load, sorry about that. There must be lots of people on there because it's college season. So for example, when you see safety and you click it, it comes up with an explanation of why for you that would be considered a safety. So it compares things like, so here you go. It tells you your chances and why, and then it gives you a detailed breakdown of what they consider at that particular school and why it's giving you that safety title. And so it'll talk to you about your coursework, your score, whether or not you choose to go with uh, test, you know, blind or test optional. And then they'll even give you a way, you know, to increase your ACT score. They'll probably try to sell you a product. I have free ACT prep on the website. Um, how much extracurriculars are considered. And so they break it down in terms of exact percentages of why they consider that to be a safety. But then what I would do after that is I'd go back into Naviance, I'd look at Loyola Marymount from Newbury Park, and I'd look and see who the kids are that have been admitted from Newbury Park, because the two of those used in conjunction with one another would give you pretty much a realistic idea of if that truly is a safety. Thank you. So for, um, can you talk a little bit about the parent version of Naviance and how uh, parents can access? Sure. So uh, the parent version is the exact same thing as the student version with the exception is that I turned the button off so parents can't add Naviance. They can't add colleges for their kids because that would be a train wreck. Kids would wake up with 35 colleges in there. So when you log in as a parent, you can see pretty much everything. There's a couple things kids can keep private, like maybe the resume they can choose to share with a parent. Um, there's a section there about brag packets, so a brag survey. So if you're a rising, you know, if you're a senior right now, um, in your about me section, there's gonna be something called um, a survey from your school. And so if a student wants me to write a letter of rec, what I ask them to do is to go to, I don't know why Navian's just locked me out, but oh, I know why, oh, here we go. Should be back any second and student, I shouldn't have closed it. And does it work? Yes, I'm back. So again, here's where we were about me. We were back on surveys from my school. We were going to, any second, there we go, brag sheet. So what I did was I talked to reps over the years and I built the questions for the brag packet specifically from what colleges want concerts to write about. So what do you do? Is financial aid a factor? Um, extracurriculars you've done and so forth. And so kids can choose to share this if they want with a parent. 
And then on the parent side, I've added a survey that's the parent brag sheet, this one right here. So this gives parents an you know, opportunity to brag about their kids. And then if they want to submit that from their Naviance account, we can see it. And so that's also another feature of what we use with a Naviance. And there's also brag sheets for each individual you know, subject. So if a kid's asking English teacher for, you know, something, um, or their, you know, science teacher for something, and is it a lot of work for the kids? Yes, but the more they provide to the people that are writing the letters, the better letters that we'll be able to write. So, um, so yes, parents have very similar rights in Navance, with the exception of adding colleges and so forth. So they'd be able to see things like their students' test scores, which I import from SAT and ACT. Um, students also have uh, a resume builder, if they want to build a resume, um, they can set up a goal. They can use this as sort of a planner. But I don't know of very many students these days that know what a planner is. I wish more did. We, we hand them out at the beginning of the year, but I sense that they're probably sitting in the back of a backpack somewhere. So um, there's also portfolios. Kids can add things like, oh, I volunteered at the, you know, Wayward Ocelot Ranch and um, I did it this many, you know, years. They can add all those things in. And so that by the time college comes around, they can simply jump back in their portfolio um, and then they can look at, oh yeah, I remember Los Robles in ninth grade for 27 hours. Like this is a good place for them just to keep everything in one place. Awesome, thank you. So just to recap, uh, parents, you do have access to Naviance. You should have been uh, emailed uh, with your login uh, code and information, but you have trouble accessing, please reach out to us, your counselors or our uh, lovely uh, secretaries, and we'll be able to support you with that. Um, going back to the apprenticeship website that you mentioned, uh, family members asking, you can please revisit it so they could take a screenshot of sure. it. Sure. So basically I'm, I'm you and I'm at the Newbury Park website. So here's us. We're like, okay, you can either get to it that way. Um, I'm assuming you're not in Naviance yet. If you're in Naviance, it's on the home page under index of links. But if you're just going to the website, because that's where you've been, it's under counseling and then it's under index of links. And then it's under career resources. So I have in-state apprenticeships if kids want to stick around or nationwide apprenticeships. So just a quick aside, I like to go RVing. So whenever I go RVing and there's someone with like a 40 foot RV and tons of toys and lifted trucks and lots of stuff, I'm like, hey, what do you do for like a living? They're like, I'm an electrician, I'm a plumber. So almost everyone that I know of in the skilled trades makes an awesome living. And so uh, the guy I talked to last time I was out and about was from Washington. And he said they had three cranes in Seattle that were broken and they couldn't even find enough people to work on the cranes. That would be plumbing and pipe fitting. So he said, you know, that he retired at 55 <laughs> and that his people make, he said about $65 take home on their check an hour. And so <laughs> again, something to consider. I mean, I'm not saying that college isn't, you know, for everyone, but I mean, I believe that kids should go with their strengths. 